Um, I wanted to give a couple updates. You know, we, we have what we're seeing right now is is completely unprecedented. You know, um, you got to go back to like World War Two, which not many of us were, you know, alive back then or um, 1918 when the Spanish flu uh, hit the hit the world and the country to even compare anything happening to our um economy and our country and our very fabric and way of life uh, that's happening right now. And so, you know, we felt compelled, both uh, the House and Senate um, leadership and, and all of our members, and we have 11 members, right? We have four members in the Hawaii State Senate, seven members in the House of Representatives, and we all work together um, to collectively speak in one voice for the island of Hawaii. So we decided to uh, get together today um, based on everything that was happening and start to look at the both the short-term and long-term ramifications of COVID-19 and how it was going to affect our island and how it was going to affect our economy. And so today we convened a um, task force, I guess you could say, or a, um, a working group, and it numbered over 60 people. Uh, we, we tried to include every facet of our island community um, and 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 we we pulled a group together of about 60 people pretty much all from hawaii island and we all stayed on a call for over three hours the call was planned for two hours and we ended up going for three hours and nobody got off that call um and and i have some things to report from that call and some information to share which i think will be very useful and this is hopefully the first of many calls that that um we will be doing uh not only um today but but in the in the in the near future and, and every day so the people that were on the call we had all members or as much members of the hawaii state uh, senate and house of representatives that we could we could muster so all 11 members of our uh, hawaii island delegation team we had representatives from the county council um, from the mayor's office and its research and development we pulled together um, uh, leading members of our tourism and hotel industry, the Hawaii Island Visitors Bureau, the Kona Coast Resort Association, the American Hotel and Lodging Association, and then finally the Grand Nani Lo Hotel here in um, Hilo. Um, it, I'll report from each segment of the group that we met with. You know, right now, our hotel industry is on the verge of bankruptcy. It is on, you know, there's no other way to put it. They have not seen such a dramatic drop of hotel occupancy rates in, in its entire history. Right now, hotel occupancy rates are down to about 22%, and they're estimating they're going to drop to 10 to 12% over the next three months. Uh, just right now alone at the Nani Lo Hotel, they're down to 35%, and they're predicting there'll be a 20% uh, in the next week, and, and that's just unsustainable. There's already... Um, layoffs that are starting to happen. Um, the ILW Local 142 um, employs or represents over 1,000 hotel workers just on the Kohala Coast, um, the Kona Kohala Coast. And so the impacts to their members um, from housekeepers to cooks to um, bellmen to all the people that make that hotel run and those hotels run are going to be... Um, uh, out of a job and are going to be laid off if if there is not a major economic package that is um, infused into our economy. And so the hotel industry, the visitor industry is seeing um, an enormous um, drop in um, airline reservations and seats and cancellations. And that's happening um, to our, to our uh, island economy right now. Um, you know, we've never seen a situation where um, every almost every facet of our economy is getting hammered from, you know, airlines, airline reservations that are dropping, hotel cancellations, um, unemployment uh, that is skyrocketing, people that are being laid off, small businesses that are being affected, um, the healthcare system that's going to be uh, quickly overwhelmed, uh, and our medical centers and the lack of supplies, our food supply. We've never seen anything like that before. And it's, it's, it's requiring an all hands on deck and, and um, it's going to require the collective effort of all of us to, to get through this. 
Um, the next group that we invited was the business community. And so we made sure that the Chamber of Commerce was there, both Hawaii Island and Kona Kohala, the Japanese Chamber, the Portuguese Chamber. Toby Taniguchi from KTA Superstore stayed on for three hours. HPM uh, Building Supply, um, Jason Fujimoto. We had the Kanoi Lehua Industrial Area Association, Bishop Estate, Kamehameha Schools. And the biggest thing with the business community is... Um, you know, the emergency SBA financing, the small business loans um, that uh, should be um, provided by the federal government that can help our small businesses um, that have already started closing up shop and, and laying people off, weather the storm. And so it's important uh, that we get that emergency SBA financing. We talked about possibly doing uh, ground lease holidays where um, leases, many businesses lease, they don't own the land beneath their businesses. They lease them from the state, they lease them from private individuals. And so we talked about, you know, what could we do to help at least in the lands that the state manages through the Department of Land and Nature, Natural Resources or through the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, where we could um, do some type of easing of the, the, the lease payments that they have and allow them to uh, maintain the capital so that they can do um, bridge financing, so they can get loans, so they can they can have capital to um, keep their business going and continue to make payroll. Um, those were some of the things that we talked about, the business community. Everything's on the table from real property taxes to transit and accommodation taxes for our hotel industry, resort fees, GE taxes, you know, you name it, what we have to do is is make sure our businesses have the capital they have to make payroll. Otherwise, they just can't keep the lights on and they're going to have to um, start to lay people off. So we talked about that. We talked about the labor community. We had representatives from the LW Local 142 on. Like I told you, they represent um, their business agents represent, um, you know, well over 16,000 um Workers all throughout our state here on Hawaii Island, a thousand ILW workers work in our hotels on the Kohala coast. And so they're preparing for mass layoffs. Um, we had the healthcare system on board. So that would be Kona Community Hospital, Linda Rosen, who happens to be the Hawaii Health System's um, director. We also had Hilo Medical Center, uh, North Hawaii Community Hospital, and West Hawaii Community Health Center. Also, Kimo Alameda joined us from the Bay Clinic. And they talked about some of the things that they're doing um, to prepare for a um, mass amount of testing that's going to need to, to be done very quickly. Um, the lack of equipment that they need. Right now, they desperately need mass and not like a thousand masks. They need like 300,000 masks. They need the um, N95 masks. They need surgical masks. They need PPEs, which is, stands for personal protective equipment. Uh, they need ventilators and breathing machines to keep people alive. Um, if, if they um, get into the most serious uh, effects of COVID-19, um, they need medication. And so these are things that we need here on Hawaii Island that is super critical to our healthcare system. Uh, there are, uh, like we talked about, um, HMC is already doing testing and you can get tested there. Um, they are apparently standing up a testing facility in Kona at the old Kona airport. I believe starting tomorrow, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green is coming in to Hawaii Island tomorrow to do site visits here in Hilo and in Kona. And um, they should be having a testing site stood up at the old Kona airport.